Well, thank you, everyone. Again, you are the yeah, yeah, early birds. Uh, we're going to talk about identity. So I'll start by saying that, don't worry, I'm not going to explain for the fourth or the fifth time the self sovereign identity, what verified credentials are, the ID. So sorry if you came from an intro. We are going to assume that all these concepts are clear. And I want to speak about uh, how we are bringing these verified credentials to be used on blockchain. So I'm quite old, probably older than most in this room. Uh, I remember seeing that uh, meme, right? That it was quite funny, uh, saying that, yeah, nobody knows that you are a dog in the internet. Nobody actually knows anything about you when you're in the internet. But now that has moved from being something uh, funny to be something a bit scary, right? Especially when you consider how this can be uh, um, uh, made worse by the use of generative AI and other tools, right? We already have the problem with bots, with automation, uh, and, and this is, is making the identity topic uh, going from a vitamin, right, to a painkiller. It was, it was a nice thing before, but now it's becoming something that we really need to unblock some use cases. Even if you ask one of these AIs, right, what is the, the cure for this fake, deep fake, et cetera, the answer that ChatGPT will give you is yes, you use blockchain. So there we go. We need uh, users to be humans, unique, compliant, well-reputed, and trustworthy, so we can open all the other use cases. Web3 has been promising these use cases for a long time, right? Think about democracy, think about uh, high-value transactions, portable reputation, a single global identity. All these promises require that we have that trust, right? We see this lack of trust in the user or the inability to uh, uh, produce this trust in the user as the main block for many of the use cases in Ethereum and in general in blockchain. So scalability was the first thing to unblock, was the first thing to solve for get the mass adoption. But uh, now we only have the base layer. We have, OK, we have a working computer, global computer. We need to go for the next, uh, uh, the next stage. And the next stage is uh, certainly, uh, certainly identity. So let me do a quick, uh, super fast summary of what is the status quo of identity in blockchain. An identity is nothing more than an identifier and attributes. right? And when you look at how different companies have been trying to solve the uh, self-sovereign identity or decentralized identity paradigm, there are two different approaches. There is one that is becoming very popular, which is, OK, just everybody has a key, right? All of you have a wallet. All of you have a key. So just use that as the identifier, and then use NFTs to express uh, your attributes. But there are some uh, challenges with this approach. First of all is privacy, right? So what is the amount of information that we are willing to put publicly on an, F on an NFT? How much do we want to uh, enrich our addresses with public information. That also limits the amount of uh, attributes and the richness of the identities that we can create with this system. And that's why uh, we have seen this approach used mostly for public reputation, uh, I would say positive public reputation, or things we want to brag about, uh, membership, and even proof of personhood. And I would say the proof of personhood uh, or proof of humanity is the last thing that most people are willing to share openly in an NFT. If we cross the line to more private things like biometrics, proof of uniqueness, reputation scores, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, like Kaiway sees, right, the line is not so clear and privacy concerns start to appear. So when we need to serve, we need to use this identity for uh, more uh, high value scenarios or, or scenarios where there, there is a higher value of the transaction or there is uh, a higher trust required, we need to go for the other approach, which is to use decentralized identifiers and verify our credentials. They have been around for a long time, right? This is not news. Uh, most of you probably have already heard about the IDs and verify our credentials, but it's, it's, it's true that they provide a level of flexibility and privacy uh, that is required to, to use these kind of credentials, right? Um, for a long time, the blockchain community has seen 
uh, KYCs, KYBs, biometrics, all these uh, uh, types of uh, data as a toxic uh, asset, right? So we need to find the mechanism that somehow can bring the compliance and the trust that these type of proofs bring to the, to the, to the ecosystem without uh, leaving apart the privacy. But there is, a, there is a gap here, and there is one thing that verified credentials aren't good for in the Web3 ecosystem, which is on-chain verification, on-chain verifiability, right? And that is what we, are going, what we have come to announce here uh, with the support of on-chain verification for verified credentials. Polygon ID already had on-chain verification of credentials. We already were able to uh, use in data from uh, a credential uh, to, to mint a zero-knowledge proof or to create a zero-knowledge proof that was presented on-chain. The news here is that we are support, supporting now the standards. Right? That is the news. Polygon ID already have these capabilities, but now we are moving towards the standards. And that has two implications or two, 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 two outcomes. Right? The first is that if you were using verified credentials or if you were already creating verified credentials, you can now verify them on chain, right? And the other uh, outcome of this, and the reason why we are moving to the standard, is because we want to create liquidity of credentials in the Ethereum ecosystem. And by liquidity of credentials, we mean what are the chances that a, a user has a valid credentials when they want to interact with an application? And now I'd like to take as an example uh, uh, our old known, I wouldn't say friends, but from Web2, right? Why is the button logging with Google so prevalent? Why is the button logging with Twitter or with Facebook? And the reason is because if you're an app developer, you know that the chances that your user already has credential on that system is 99%, right? That probability is that makes the developer to decide, yes, it's going to be a good experience for 99 or 100% of my users, right? And that is because these providers have this liquidity of credentials. In Web3, we haven't achieved any system that has that liquidity of credential. Any mechanism that you choose to access, control, or to gather information from your user, you are making a bet on an identity system, right, that may not have the, the, the liquidity of credentials that other, other options do. And that's why many times resort to logging with the wallet, right? Or just use passwords. So I want to reinforce this idea of liquidity of credentials. We really are on a mission here, right? And, and the reason why I want to reinforce this is because um, I want to make very clear what is our mission here. Why is Polygon doing Polygon ID, right? We are doing this because we want these liquidity of credentials. There are two reasons. First, adoption. We think there are many use cases out there, real world use cases, that will not be unlocked until the identity layer is solved. That's point number one. Point number two, we have seen many attempts and many actors to solve this identity layer, right? But uh, it's, it's difficult because you need to bring together an ecosystem. I will talk about that later. But for that reason, we are making all our innovation, all our developments open source, right? First thing, we are, we are uh, registering now a new DID method with very uh, advanced uh, features, like you can see, key rotation, private revocation, uh, multiple profiles, CK query language. So it's, in our opinion, one of the most advanced DID methods out there, especially when it comes to privacy, right, and flexibility. We are making that open source as any other component that we are publishing on Polygon ID. Our main goal is adoption, both from the developers to solve the identity uh, layer, and then from the users that will be uh, unlocking all these use cases. And this is, I think, the most important uh, slide, or the most important point that I want to make today. Uh, I was here to talk about the product launch, about the product update, right? There are nice features, good technology. Come to our booth. We will explain you all the details, right? But I think what is important is why us, right? We are not the only ones trying to solve the identity uh, thing on the blockchain. Many have tried before. Many are trying, right? But we, we have a different vision of this. 
We have super strong technology. Believe us, we can, we can prove it, right? And there you will have the repos. You can check it for yourself. But we think that the identity game is not about technology. It's about an ecosystem, right? And we have the ability to attract people to that ecosystem because we are a trusted infrastructure provider that is well known and has massive adoption in the Ethereum ecosystem. So even before having the code release, I mean, we opened the repos this week, right? Before having the repos, we already have a lot of partners working with us, right? And we have many more that, that, uh, that are not in this list that are also interested in, in, in exploring the code already and running proof of concepts, right? And this is the key. The key is not how uh, fancy the technology is. The key is that if as a, de a developer you choose to authenticate and to, valid to verify the, the identity of your users with Polygon ID, there is a high chance that your users will already have credentials that they can use. So, uh, as we like to say, show me the code, right? So all this is, is cool, it's, it's, it's good, I, I can, I can uh, tell good stories, but you can check for yourself. Everything is open source. You can see this is what we are uh, releasing, uh, launching in this release. Uh, you can, uh, if, you're a, if you're a wallet provider, there is a wallet SDK. You can integrate identity capabilities into your uh, uh, wallet. If you are a developer, you have the verifier SDK. You can check verifier credentials. You can do passwordless login with the DID. And if you are an issuer, if you are a source of trust, if you are delivering KYC or biometrics, or you are an oracle, or you have some information that may be use, uh, useful for your users, you have a self-hosted issuer uh, node that uh, will, will help you to create these credentials. Right? We move away from any SaaS solution. We don't want to centralize any or host any information. Right? So every issuer is hosting their, their, their own credentials. There is always also some uh, beta repos. Uh, we invite everybody to, to test them, to check them, to, uh, to give us feedback. Uh, there is one very interesting uh, JavaScript SDK that you can use beyond the, the wallets. Right? You can issue credentials. You can verify credentials on browser extensions, applications. I mean, the uh, possibilities are quite, quite wide. So here is the code. We are at the boot. Uh, come talk to us. If you, if you don't have a clear idea of how uh, this identity model may fit in your particular project, if you don't understand how to make this into a real use case, that is what we like to talk the most. Right? So come and, and ask us. Thank you very much.